One, zero. All engines running, commit, liftoff. Space, to, to a large extent, has become a essential infrastructure the same way that you need roads, you need bridges, uh, you need space. We're very excited about the fact that uh, the South African Space Agency is about to be established. Uh, worldwide, it's really quite important for governments to support the space industry, the indigenous space industry. Well, from a scientific point of view, um, it's been deemed by the government that, that South Africa should use astronomy as, as, a, as a major scientific driver. You're talking about um, uh, the biggest radio telescope this planet uh, has ever seen. You know, a, a billion euro project. We're very, very optimistic that the Space Agency um, will play out its mandate as um, perpetuating the space leadership in Africa. I was in Zululand in a trading store and my brother and I were listening to a radio broadcast of that landing. So I can remember it very, very clearly. It was absolutely astonishing as a young man. It was very inspiring, these guys going off to the moon. This was really, really daring stuff. And of course, the station was involved in all of those missions. NASA had built a big station at Madrid in Spain, and this was a backup station. So if there was, for instance, a storm at Madrid, which blocked out their communications, then this station would have stepped in and provided the uh, downlink and uplink, uh, downlink of data, telemetry information from the spacecraft. It all started back in 1961 when the Americans needed a new tracking station for their spacecraft which were going out beyond Earth orbit, beginning the exploration of the moon and the planets. One, zero, all engines running, commit, liftoff. And so a farm was bought here back in 1961, the Hartebjerg farm, and this station was built down in the valley here for tracking the spacecraft. The US government was running into a lot of problems with the politics of the South African government at that time, apartheid of course. Um, it was becoming quite difficult for them politically to continue working with South Africa. And so when NASA closed down the station, a small core of engineers and technicians remained here and most of the equipment left, but again, one receiver was left on the antenna and very basic equipment for observing with manual control, but sufficient to actually recommission it now as a radio astronomy observatory, basically listening to natural radio waves coming from things out in space like exploding stars and supernovae, pulsars, things like that. Another thing we've been involved in is...